Hi everyone, it's Laura, and the other night we had our first hard frost here in Connecticut. Uh, we are in zone 6. I'm showing you some clips from the morning after. It was quite pretty with the frost, but it got down to about 26 degrees, and a lot of things died, but there were quite a few things that didn't die that I was kind of surprised by, and I thought were kind of interesting, so I thought I would share those with you. So let's have a look around the garden at what lived and what didn't after the first killing frost of the season. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to share three semi evergreen perennials that might surprise you as well. So when I say diet, I'm kind of referring to two different things. For annuals, if I'm saying they died, they won't come back next year. Whereas if I say perennial died, I'm just kind of referring to the foliage and the blooms because the plant itself will come back next year. Okay, so first we'll have a look at the hydrangeas. I have quite a few hydrangeas and in general, most of them did get affected. Their blooms and foliage did die off like this one that we're looking at now. But there's another area in my yard where the hydrangeas were not nearly as affected. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so as you can see, this one does not look nearly as bad as the other one. So what what's going on here, right? Um, this area over here, I'll just tell you about a little bit. There are a few factors that I think might be having an effect. First of all, this area stays fairly wet. We live near a lake, so we have a high water table anyway, but we also have a little bit of a slope in our yard, and this is the low end. So this is where it stays the most wet. And I have read that sometimes hydration can be a factor in how frost affects your plants. So that could be something. The other thing is um, it's kind of a windbreak area. We do have a fence here, and then if I back up, I can show you, it's just kind of crowded. Like, we have a lot of obstacles, basically, for the wind to get through. So, it's just more sheltered of an area. So, I'm not sure, you know, exactly, because 26 degrees is really low. So, I am surprised that some of these things uh, made it through, but... Those are just some of the factors in this uh, microclimate area here. So let's go to the front and I'll show you another hydrangea that was kind of funny to me. This one here, you can see how the side that's like up against the window still has its color, whereas the rest of it is totally, you know, frostbitten or uh, freezer burned, I guess. And actually, there's one down here that looks kind of like that as well. This one is kind of in between two ageratum plants, which brings me to my next plant that I wanted to talk about, which is the ageratum. These um, I, I talk about a lot. These are one of my favorite annuals, and they do handle cooler weather better than some other annuals, but this... 26 degrees was enough to kill these guys so I'm going to be cutting these back now there's a lot of plants that I will leave up during the winter for birds or whatever who, whoever wants to you know nibble on it through the winter but these ageratum plants they really aren't providing anything for them and they look terrible <laughs> so I kind of wish I had cut them back before the frost before I had to deal with them getting all kind of gross but I had wanted to see how they would do with the frost, and obviously they, they did not do well. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to cut all these back. And I am just going to cut them back. I'm not going to yank them out entirely. I'm mostly doing that so as I don't disturb the roots, because I have a lot of things that are planted close together. I don't want to mess up roots of a plant that's close by. And also, if you leave the roots, um, the nutrients will break down. So that's another reason to just leave them in there. And here's one that surprised me. The alyssum, I have this planted in a, several different places in my yard. 
they all did great. They are still in bloom. They look fantastic. They had frost on them, but they just um, didn't get as affected as other plants. This one that I have in the window box, I did cover. I covered this window box with a pillowcase. It also had angelonia in here, and that didn't make it even with the pillowcase on it. But the alyssum is still looking fantastic. And I have another one down here in my big purple pot that is also looking pretty good. I mean, it's, you know, kind of looking a little bit ratty because it's towards the end of the season. But it's still got a few blooms on it. So for a 26 degree night, I am pretty pleased with how the alyssum did for me. And now I just wanted to talk about a few different uh, semi-evergreen perennials that surprised me. And these were a surprise to me last season, really. As a beginner gardener, I didn't even realize there were semi-evergreen or even evergreen perennials. And I just figured I can't be the only one who did not know this, right? <laughs> so I'm going to give you three perennials that for me in my zone six garden, they pretty much lasted the entire winter with some foliage or even with all of their foliage. And the first one is Hookera. And I just love this plant. I can't wait to have just more and more of these. I have a few of these. I didn't realize until watching them last winter make it through pretty much the entire winter looking exactly the same, just the way they look now. So you might lose some foliage with extreme weather, and that's pretty much to be expected on all these plants. But for the most part, they keep their color, and I just, they're such a nice pop of color in the winter. Next is yarrow. Now, I like yarrow because it has this beautiful ferny texture. The bloom heads are beautiful as well, but for me, it's more about the foliage. And these will keep their foliage, most if not all of their foliage over the winter, especially if they are protected, like if they have some leaves around them or something, they do great as a semi-evergreen. And lastly is penstemon. This is another top 10 plant for me. It has dark colored foliage, so it's right there. It's a winner for me. And it holds its color pretty much through the whole winter. And these ones aren't bloomed out that we're looking at right now because it's they're still in their first year. But the ones that bloom, I, this is a plant that I leave the dead stalks up on. They have really sturdy stems. And I just love the way the seed heads look. They have kind of like a otherworldly look. <laughs> I just really like them. So those are definitely a favorite. And that is, uh, that's everything. So those are three semi evergreen perennials that surprised me in my zone six. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments if you have any favorite semi evergreen or even evergreen perennials. So let me know. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.